Greetings and welcome to PVW Principle of Virtual Work example and we're going to be applying the Principle of Virtual Work to a beam assembly with a cable shown here. So we have what's given on the right, this beam with a 280 kilonewton point load at the far right side, joint C, or I guess location C, and we're asked what is the vertical deflection of point C. So delta C in the vertical direction. We're given this uh, geometry and also the material information shown for the cable and the beam. And what's interesting here, we didn't, don't normally see cables, but cable is just like a tension-only truss member. And we know a lot about truss members, so it's, it's not too different. And we notice about this structure that it looks like we may get an axial force in the beam, which will make things interesting because we have kind of a hybrid truss slash beam scenario. What I mean by that is we have contributions from axial deformation and bending deformation. I've written here on the bottom left the virtual work equations for the deflection of a beam subject to a loading, delta P, and also at the bottom equation that's for an angle change, theta P. So doing some quick brainstorming here, we could say that we are going to have contributions to deformation, or sorry, contributions to deflection. They're, these are results of deformation strains. So we're going to have bending deformations from A, B, and from B to C. And we could also have axial deformations from A, B, and the beam, and from B, D, which is from the cable. So the first step, always principle of virtual work, P and Q systems. Okay, let's get started here. I've shown a P system with our 280 kilonewton load at C and also our Q system, which we're going to end up applying a load Q at C. So these are our real and virtual systems, just as a reminder. So starting with the P system, let's solve it, essentially. So we can do the sum of all the moments about B equals to zero. This gives us that AY is the 200 kilonewton load times 2 meters divided by the distance between AY and B, so that's 6 meters, gives 93.33 kilonewtons downwards. And we can draw our other reactions here, DY, DX, and AX, and I'll let you do that yourselves, but you can find that DX equals AX equals DY in this scenario, and solving using the fact that we have some of all the forces in the y equals zero, we can find dy at 373.33 kilonewtons. And well, that's why dx must be equal to ax because db is six meters tall and six meters wide, if that makes sense. Not really, it's horizontal, but you get my drift. Just switching the colors here to blue. So this is a right triangle. 1-1 one, one, root 2 triangle, I guess you could say. So 528 kilonewtons is the force in cable DB. And we can also find the axial force in the beam between A and B. And we, what we're really after here is our moments for our bending deformations. So we're going to draw our shear and moment diagrams. And we can pretty easily tell what the values are from the values that we've put up top. But Pause the video if you get lost a bit and just ensure that all my work is done. I do make mistakes routinely, mostly just to keep you on your toes. So looking down here at this moment, we can define two different coordinate systems, one from the left and one from the right. We'll call them x1 and x2. And we can form an MP1 equation. That's the moment caused by the load P for the coordinate system 1. And that just equals negative 93.33x1. And we do the same thing for x2 as shown. Okay, great. So moving on to the Q system, we're going to choose Q equals 6 kilonewtons. And I know normally we choose it to be 1 kilonewton or kip, but this time it's 6 because we find we can work with whole numbers in that, in that case. So 6 kilonewtons creates the following reactions, and the force in the cable would be... 8 squared plus 8 squared, all square rooted, or the square root of, what would that be, 128? 
Okay, so we can also tell pretty easily what, okay, yeah, I'll change that to blue just to be consistent with the uh, P-system drawing. So these forces will be in blue. From A to B, we have an axial force of 8 kilonewtons. And again, we can draw our shear and moment diagrams just as we did before. I'm going to fast forward here for a second because the system is identical to the P-system. It's just scaled down. Okay, now we are ready to apply our principle of virtual work equation to this structure, having really gathered all the information we need. So let's write out our full equation. So Q times the value that we're after, our deflection is equal to the integral between 0 and 6 of MQ1, MP1, DX1 all over EI of the beam. And similar, we have to add the integral from 0 to 2 for the second coordinate system. And then we have these axial force contributions or axial deformations. So FQ of the cable times FP of the cable times L of the cable, if you see the pattern here, all over AE of the cable. And the same thing for the beam, FQ, FPL over AE, all for the beam. But that's only, that's only the length from A to B. So that's, we need to remember that. All right, so let's sub in the values here. I'm going to sub in all these values. I won't read them out to you because that is just painful. Okay, here I go writing as fast as I can. And here we go. So let's go ahead and move Q to the right side of the equal sign and put it on the bottom of each of these fractions. And then we'll actually end up with our desired value, our deflection, our vertical deflection at C. So our vertical deflection at C is... 2,239,920 plus 746,667 all divided by EI of the beam plus 8,448 all divided by, well, divided by EA of the cable plus 2,987 divided by AE of the beam. And keep in mind, we need our E's, I's, and A's to use kilonewton meters just as we have used kilonewton meters throughout. Summing all this gives us the final answer, 79.7 -dum -dum, millimeters. All right, fantastic, problem solved. The one thing that I would suggest doing is figuring out what are the percentage contributions from each source of deformation. And this will help us see that, for example, we probably could have neglected the axial deformation in the beam from A to B, uh, I don't know what the percentage is offhand, but I think it's it will be something less than 5% of the overall deformation. In fact, that's a good idea. Why don't, uh, if you have too much time on your hands, why don't somebody do that calculation and put it in the comments below and we can see. I think it should be at least less than 10%. Alright, that's it for me.